This short presentation gives you a system to pre-flight for an instrument flight. The important part, like anything in instrument flying, is to have a system, have a habit, and repeat it so that it's yours and it works. Then implement it. The Instrument Flying Handbook tells us that we should do this, and since it's on your instrument ACS, it's regulatory for the check ride. And if it's regulatory for the check ride, it's a pretty obvious message that you should be doing this prior to an instrument flight. So again, the key is to have a method to work your way through a thorough check and verification. This is our checklist, and these two items, they're just a few words, but they encompass a lot of information. These are some of the things that you should be checking. Again, the key is to have a system. Say you're about to launch into an 800 foot solid overcast with one mile visibility. At 900 feet, that's the last place in the world that you want to discover an instrument problem. This is serious stuff. So let's get started. When you turn on the Avionics Master and look at the GTN on the right here, first you check that the databases are current. This is the next screen on the GTN. And I can't tell you how many times I've watched a pilot just blow past this uh, screen with the continue button. This screen comparison tells you that the two boxes are communicating properly and that the information is being shared. The first item is lateral CDI, and you see that it says half left, meaning half scale deflection. And sure enough, the needle is deflected halfway. The next item is lateral flag, and this is really a carryover from older avionics where we had an actual flag that could display. Now we would have a message like this. The next item is vertical CDI. And um, now we see a half up displayed on the glide slope or glide path. And vertical flag is this message here, no GS. The two from indicator uh, is indicating two and the enunciator is indicating LPV, which is the highest level of accuracy that this box is capable of. And uh, the next uh, is OBS, uh, that's indicating 150, and desired track is also 150. So maybe that all sounded like a big deal, but it can literally be accomplished in about two seconds if you just know where to look and what to look for. But don't just blow past it, that's my point. Now let's check our flight instruments. Again, the key is to establish a flow that makes sense. This is a logical flow that I establish and it works for me. I teach my instrument students to follow it, so follow along with me. It's a counterclockwise flow, and you start at the top center of the PFD and move in a circle, checking things as you go. And you are checking both the primary flight display and your backup or standby instruments, the G5, at the same time. We start at the top dead center and announce out loud each item. Remember the reinforcement that you get by talking out loud. First check both flight mode enunciators and they should be blank. Now check the speed tape on both instruments, again announcing it out loud. True airspeed, indicated airspeed, ground speed all show zero. The trend vector should not be displayed. Now we check our heading indicators. One on the G3X, two on the G5, and three, the mag compass. At this point, you've already got the weather and have set your altimeter, but now you're checking it and checking that it makes sense. It should be within 75 feet of field elevation. The VDI should not be displayed, that's the vertical deviation indicator, and the VSI should be on zero. So we finished most of the flight instrument check. You're doing all of this before you've even taxied out of the tie down and prior to run up. We're still gonna check the turn and bank indicator, the airspeed function, and the VSI. We'll come back to those. So like the GTN check, this may sound like a lot of stuff, but if you establish the systematic pattern and practice it, trust me, the whole thing is done in a matter of seconds. Now we move on to our avionics setup. Nope. A little bit slow there. So now we move on to the avionics setup. And um, again, you want a, uh, want a system. Start in the lower right corner of the G3X and work your way across. Then left to right across the top. That brings you over to the stack where you go top to bottom. First check your insets. Are they the way you want them? Uh, check both bearing pointers. 
Are they how you want them? This looks fine to me. The single needle is pointing to the active waypoint and the double needle is pointing to the number one VOR. Now go up to the top data bar and check everything. Uh, number one radio, active and standby frequencies. Uh, are they set? The transponder, uh, is that set to the proper code? The active waypoint, desired track and distance, do they all make sense? And the number two radio, active and standby frequencies. Now we go over to the radio stack and start from top to bottom. Do you want the flight director on or off? Now, while you're here, set your initial heading and altitude. The audio panel set to transmit and listen on the proper frequency. Next, you would review and validate the flight plan. Make sure you don't have some waypoint in Iceland in there and everything is in the proper sequence. Number two radio set and the transponder set. Like I said, all of this gets done before you've even left the tie down. The last thing you want is to try doing any of this while you're taxiing. That's a recipe for distraction, and this will avoid distraction, let you focus on taxiing and traffic. Now, as I mentioned before, there are three more instrument checks left. While you're taxiing out, make a few shallow turns. This is for your turn and slip indicators. Check both the G3X and the G5. Uh, you should see the compass cards turn. You should see a magenta turn vector on the HSI and the ball should move out in the opposite direction of your turns. This final check of the heading indicator is when, the, the final check I should say, of the heading indicator is when you're lined up on the runway. So now there are only two things left that you can do and they are both part of your takeoff. At this point we've checked everything that you can and you can continue with the peace of mind that nothing has been forgotten or neglected. So again these flows are ones that I came up with and they're not required but they are comprehensive and they do help you uncover or expose and prevent problems. I'm not saying that you have to do this exactly in this flow or sequence, but I am saying that you should be checking each and every one of these items. We're ready to go. After setting the power and checking your instruments, engine instruments, you look at the airspeed tapes, both of them, and say airspeed alive. Now we know that's working properly. We started our takeoff roll and lifted off and usually when you get to about 100 or 200 feet AGL, your VSI will start to work. Remember, there's a lag in that. And now you check your VSIs, again, both of them, to verify that they're working properly. Positive rate, done. You've checked everything you can and should feel confident that you're prepared for an immediate entry into the clouds. Trust me, you do not want to discover something wrong at the moment you are IMC. This may seem like a lot and it may seem complicated, but all it takes is establishing a pattern and then practicing it and using it. If you do the flow, if you do, the flow becomes natural and I'm quite sure that you will uncover or discover something that you hadn't set properly and would like to have done before getting airborne.